Hi, welcome to Next Level Carpentry. I'm shooting video on the job site today. I just finished scribing and fitting and uh, doing the initial installation of all these faux beams. This is actually hollow, which would be a surprise to some people, but not all. Um, so I'm just shooting this video intro to introduce the scribe fit and installation process for these faux beams. Uh, this one has got the complete faux finish on it. The other ones are just stained. And after this initial fitting, I pull everything down, uh, put all this faux finish on, and then put them up the final time. But uh, right now, I'm going to slip this complete one into place and take down the rest of the beams and bring them back to the shop for the faux finishing. So you can see that step of this ongoing process. Uh, the walls, uh, naturally, are all a little bit different. Uh, taping seams in the corner uh, make it a challenge to do an accurate scribe and fit. But the process I use, I think you'll agree, gets a pretty respectable job done. This beam has uh, a left end and a right end. If I put it in backwards, it ain't going to fit. And I mark the inside to show which end goes next to the stairs. And once the installation is complete, obviously, I'll touch up the scratches on the walls and uh, have to patch a hole over here that was needed for doing this in-between fit without a joint. Uh, as you'll see in the video ahead, uh, the joints in the other beams allow scribe fit of both ends to get a nice clean fit, no caulk, no putty necessary. So I'm going to get into the process. Check it out. So I decided to use some ladder panels for attaching the beams to the ceiling. These were made by ripping 2x4s in half and spacing them out with blocks at about 3 feet on center. I laid out the location of the ladder panels on the ceiling with a Bosch green line laser and then screwed the ladder panels to blocking that was installed in the ceiling before it was sheetrocked. I used 3 inch long GRK multi-purpose framing screws to attach the ladder panels to the blocking. I like the idea of using these lightweight ladder panels rather than trying to rip flatten and attach solid 2x12s or something like that to the ceiling. It's just a more efficient use of a material and in the long run much more accurate. I milled a 22 and a half degree bevel on one edge of each of the two 2x2s two that make up the ladder panels. That slight bevel makes the bottom face of the ladder panel narrower than the width of the opening on the top of the beam and allows the beams to slip up into the place without a fight between the corners of the beam and the corners of the ladder panels. With this mock-up beam slipped into place, you can see the bevel more clearly and how it allows space for the beam to slip into place with less of a fuss. I used the green line laser to lay out the location of the end of each of the beam segments so that the joints would line up in the final installation. These layout lines serve as a guide for the scribe offset process, and I'll show you how I do that. First, I make a very accurate 2-inch scribe offset block and mark the ladder panel with a line that's exactly 2 inches away from the layout line that represents where the end of the beam will be in the final installation. With the marks made, I take the corresponding beam segment, lift it up into place, and slip it over the ladder panel, and then line up the end of the beam precisely with the scribe offset mark. This puts the beam in a temporary position that's exactly 2 inches from where it'll end up. The scribe offset block then becomes the scribe block that I use to put a very crisp scribe line on the end of the beam. I'm using a carpenter's pencil with a very sharp classic point on it so that I can get a clean line on the rough texture of this beam. You can see how to get that sharp classic point in the video I did some time back about how to sharpen a carpenter's pencil. The scribe line ends up precisely two inches from where the beam needs to be when it's trimmed and fit against the wall. Once I have an accurate scribe line on the end of the beam, I simply remove these fast cap third hand poles and take the beam out to the sawhorses where I can trim off the end. With blatant disregard for branding, I'm using this very thin kerf DeWalt 6.5 inch 40 tooth cross cut blade in my Makita saw because the combination makes a very fine accurate cut precisely where I want it. Where I want it is just proud of the scribe pencil mark because it would be a major mistake to overcut at this stage of the game. I cut all three sides before proceeding to the next step. 
The next step is to use a 3 by 21 inch belt sander with the 36 grit zirconium oxide belt on it to remove the wood precisely up to the scribe pencil mark. I start out by back beveling the cut end of the beam at about 5 or 10 degrees. After most of the material is removed with this back beveling, I'll close in right up to the pencil mark with a precision that allows me to remove the pencil mark itself. No more, no less. Here's a close up look at the end of the beam after I've belt sanded right to the scribe mark. You can see the effect of the back beveling where the whole idea is to make sure only the very face of the wood ever touches the wall and that none of the wood behind the face touches the wall first to leave a gap after the scribe process. The beams are attached to the ladder panels with these small GRK Torx drive trim screws. For the best installation, I use this special snappy bit that's designed for putting a small countersink hole for each screw location. I drill one countersunk pilot hole at the end of each of the spreader bars, and the small countersink keeps the screw heads from mushrooming wood when they're driven to hold the beam in place. Once I'm completely satisfied with the scribe work on the end of the beam, I carry it back inside, jump up on the scaffold, and slip the beam into place on the ladder panel, and then hold it there with those fast cap third hand poles. I don't set the poles too tight, and that allows me to slide the beam till it butts into the wall for the perfect scribe fit that I was after. You can see by the fit on the other end of the beam that it's moved precisely two inches because the end of the beam lines up with the mark from the line laser and the two inch scribe fitting block lines up with its offset mark. And you can see with this close up view the quality of the scribe fit to the wall. Once I'm happy with how everything fits, I tighten up the poles and drive a few trim screws to hold it in place without support. I set the screw heads just beyond flush so that they'll easily be covered with putty and become invisible. Once the screws are holding the beam in place, I drop the pole clamps, move the scaffold, and then work to place the next beam section in place. With the scaffold locked down and all the tools where they need to be, I bring in the next beam section, paying attention to the orientation marks so the beam is in the right place for the right fit. And then I use the pole clamps to hold it in place. I snug it up and then make sure it's tight to the first beam and check the fit all around. Next, I mark the leading edge of the beam for its precise location and then drop the pole clamps and the beam so I can set up to scribe the third beam section against the opposite wall. With the precision I'm after and the tolerances involved, I like to use the actual beam for this measurement rather than a tape measure to ensure accuracy and reduce frustration. With a precise mark for the end of the beam, I use the two inch offset block again to mark the position of this beam for scribing it to the opposite wall. Now I can heft the last beam section in place, hold it up with full clamp, and set it to the two inch offset mark. And by now you know the drill. I use the offset block as a scribe block along with that sharp next level carpentry pencil to put a crisp line exactly two inches away from the wall where the beam fits. I work carefully with the scribe block to ensure that it follows the exact contour of the wall because the drywall tape and compound in the corner expands it to more than 90 degrees and I want to make sure the beam fits nicely regardless of that angle. I take the beam back out to the sawhorses, trim it and belt sand it precisely to the scribe line that I made in this step. But then when I bring it back into place, it's just ever so slightly too long according to the end mark from the center beam section. And I need to take off a skosh to make sure there's space for the center beam section to slip back in. For this go round, I use a six inch joint knife, which, as it so happens, is exactly one skosh thick. So by scribing the end of the beam with it and then belt sending that pencil mark off, I make a one skosh adjustment for a perfect fit. You can see how slight this adjustment is going to be and it actually varies slightly from the first scribe. But I follow the same back bevel angle that I used for scribing the beam in the first place and work carefully with a steady hand to remove the wood, including the pencil mark. I add a slight rounded touch at the top corner of the beam so it doesn't gouge the wall when I put it into place. I do each face of the beam individually so that I have a good view angle of the work and have complete control of the belt sander for removing this small amount with precision. On this third edge, you can see that there's just slightly more wood that needs to be removed on the bottom corner of the beam with virtually nothing at the seal. But it's well within that one skosh tolerance for a very precise fit. With the end of the beam rescribed, I just put it back into place and hold it in place with two of the third hand clamps to check for the fit. Once I'm satisfied with the fit, I drive four of the Torx drive trim screws to hold it in place and then remove the third hand clamps and then get set up to reinstall the center beam section. 
I pay close attention to the beam orientation marks so that the beam is installed the way I intended. The scribing tolerances are very tight and something as slight as globs of faux finish on the ends of the beams can prevent it from going into place. So I have to work at it a bit to get it slipped up and into position. This is when it would be nice to have a helper. This is an unrehearsed reinstallation of this center beam section. So you can see that it takes a little bit of grunting and fussing to get it to go. But once everything's lined up and I lift both ends of the beams simultaneously, it slips up into place. Having that bevel on the ladder panel and the fact that the spreader bars in the beams are only attached to one face of the beam allows some flex in the width of the top of the beam. So everything slides and snaps into place nicely. Once I've got it in position, the third hand clamps hold it in place and a little extra pressure pushes it up tight to the ceiling before I drive the Torx drive trim screws to hold it just where I want it. So that wraps up the scribe and fit process for these beams. And you can see why I used three sections so that I could get an accurate scribe fit on each end and a precise fit for the section in the middle. So everything looks like it grew there. Here's an overview of all 12 beam sections in place. Each one has been scribed and fit and installed in the manner of the three sections I just put up. I want to do a stress test that shows the strength of these beams for the benefit of anybody that watched the video where I made them in the first place. As you'll recall, the corners of the beams are just precise bevels that are glued together using biscuit joints for alignment and Merrill band clamps for clamping pressure. I also used spreader bars to stabilize the assembly during clamping. I think the breaking strength of these little end cutoffs proves that a lock miter joint is completely unnecessary because not a single one of these breaks in the miter, proving that in every case the glue joint is stronger than the wood itself. Well, uh, now that the beams have all been sight fit, scribed to the walls, and look good, I was able to pull them all back down. They're standing here, they're all numbered and labeled, so I can put them up exactly where they were before I took them down here. They're going back to the shop to finish up the full finishing process. That one beam segment's up there. That was a final visual test of the full finish. Um, I've got to tweak it a little bit and end up here. Uh, but that'll be the next video showing how to uh, stain the beams and put this full finish on them. But now you see what it takes to install them and hopefully understand why I didn't want to complete the finish process with all the banging around and moving around that it takes to scribe, fit them to the walls and get everything in position. Uh, this way, once the faux finish is done, I just bring them back, slip them into their numbered place, uh, eight screws, a little bit of putty, and it's a done deal. So um, I guess that's that. I'll wrap this thing up and ask you to uh, consider subscribing to Next Level Carpentry if you haven't already, if you like the video, and ask you to hit that thumbs up button for me if you would. It uh, helps the video succeed, which I really appreciate. You can check out uh, Patreon which I've recently added if you have any interest in supporting the efforts here at the channel. And there's also some pretty cool gear, some t-shirts and stickers and posters at Teespring. You can find the link just below this video and I'll put it in the description as well. All those things help support the channel and help me reach a goal of making Next Level Carpentry my business and uh, my business a side job. So uh, any, anything you do along those lines is really appreciated. So uh, until I'm back at the shop doing the faux finishing uh, and until next time, thanks for watching.